Our next discussion promised to be truly eye-opening. As our speakers join me on stage, I'd like to introduce our moderator, Dr. Einar Sawyer, who in her own right is leading the charge for digital health innovation across many fields. She is a brilliant physician at UCSF and a dear friend. In short, she's a rock star. I'll let you take it. Oh, and, and everyone, I'm sorry, apologies. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me yes. as well. <laughs> you know, please come on up. Thank this you. is all about because Einar. <laughs> Compared to these two, I'm, I'm a mini rock star because we actually have two real rock stars up here. Um, and what we're going to do is very brief introductions, and then we're going to get into, uh, hope, uh, I think, a fairly lively, uh, not a debate, but I think an invigorating conversation. Um, I'm an orthopedist at UCSF. I direct the Skeletal Health Service, so one foot still in clinical work, which informs my innovation work. And I, I help with health innovation and technology in orthopedics at the university and then also on the outside trying to help elevate the ecosystem and get to transformative healthcare solutions as I think everyone in this room is. This is a great opportunity, Jill. I really thank you because I have looked forward to this conversation for quite a while. I'd like to introduce your own Toss, who is a Chief Strategy and Innovation Officer at Philips and also Ida Schoenberg, who's uh, President and CEO of American Well. So we're gonna be talking in depth about philosophies and then some, some actualization of all the concepts that we, we would love to see and that are they're actually here, as Jill said. And the title of Hospital of the Future, we thought was actually great because we think the Hospital of the Future isn't a hospital and in the words of your own himself, it's actually gonna be a network. So let's move right on. Would you start with your introduction? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, well, what we believe is that, that the state of technology allows us to look at healthcare in a completely different way. So today, if you go to a hospital, it's, it's actually organized around you guys, around physicians. And um, I think what, what people really need is care that's organized around them, that's available 24-7. You know, more than 80% of, of the spend is on chronic disease. Chronic disease is with you. 24 hours, you know, uh, people have issues at home or at work. Um, they need care at moments that were not scheduled in an appointment. So we believe that uh, we can start delivering a new way of care that's centered around you, that, that creates deep insights in your own health, your drivers for health, and should you have illness, then I think we can tee up the technology to do much more precise diagnosis. And, you know, we can do that also through technology, but we can also combine the knowledge of different physicians much more in a care team. And having a virtual model for this that has hospitals, of course we need hospitals. So yes, we need hospitals, but I think what we really need is a 24-7 system that's organized around you, that gives you the tools to manage your own health, and should there be issues, you should be able to call the right specialist at the right time at the right place. So I think that's the philosophy on which we design our solutions. Great, thank you. Could you give us some insights to American Well, Ido? You know? Sure, I mean, uh, I try to dedicate myself to fixing healthcare as a life project. Unfortunately, it takes a few lifetimes to try to do that, <laughs> and many, many people. Uh, so we're trying to essentially uh, connect four parties. We're trying to help doctors treat patients who are not in the room. We're trying to help payers finance those transactions. We're trying to make it simple and easy for patients to choose the right interventions for them and allow for innovators to take advantage of the fact that CARES is going to be divorced from a location. Uh, it took many years to understand where healthcare is going. Everybody would agree that the current situation is not sustainable. But the good news is that I think the new model of care is becoming clearer every day, and it's going to be pretty fabulous. Great, thank you. I, we had a really nice discussion leading up to this, as most of you know, is the procedure. We do a panel prep discussion. Um, what happens in that discussion is new things bubble up between us and in the space between us, which is really what the beauty of this partnership is gonna highlight, is the hybrid vigor that can happen. I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the things that we see happening as shifts in healthcare. I think one of the things that we've struggled with for a long time as in a healthcare delivery side is understanding that for the patient in the center of their health sphere, 
the center of their universe is not the hospital or the clinic or the legacy EHR that records those interactions, but they're really in the center of their health sphere and they touch health and generate data at many different sites. So I'd like to uh, just hear from both of you on a company basis, individually, com individual companies first, how you've responded to that, that idea that, because I've watched both of these companies understand and appreciate and tackle that uh, early on. So we, we believe that the more we know about the patient, the better we can help them diagnose and, and treat them. So. Uh, that means that you need to get a longitudinal view of the patient. You know, how does the patient evolve over time? I think with current diagnostics, you know, you can take a genome. You can not only know about the patient, but also their parents, their grandparents. Um, I know that a good radiologist can look at uh, an image of a heart and, and identify, you know, the major medical events that happened. But if we tie this all up, over time and we surround it with contextual information, behavioral information that can become very powerful, but it can even drive how the way we develop our systems. So for instance, a monitor, we shouldn't configure it. It should configure itself mm -hmm. because it knows you. It will then generate more information about you, which can be helpful. If you go and do an MR image, that MR should recognize you should understand about prior studies, but should understand about you so it can set itself and configure itself for you. And in general, we believe that if you start making these connections and you feed that with understanding of the patient, I think we create way better outcomes, but also it gives patients the opportunity to take better control of their own health. And from the American Well philosophy on this? Well, um, What's pretty clear right now is that more of the care is going to happen at the home. And instead of having a lab result every six months, people are going to be continuously connected to wearable and wearable devices. So we'll have much more data to analyze. And when we have more data, we'll, be, we'll have the opportunity to have much more sophisticated, repeatable, scalable algorithms that will help us understand what happened and what to do much faster in a much more efficient way. And that will allow them to create a very effective intervention uh, at the most convenient uh, location. Uh, this uh, reality cannot be realized by any one company. Uh, it can only be realized by a coalition. What we're trying to do is set uh, the stage, create some kind of electronic glue that will allow for the different participants to begin to collaborate. Most importantly, for many years, the world of healthcare was completely disconnected from the world of consumer. Many great consumer companies like Google and others tried to reach out and create healthcare assets and weren't very successful. And many providers tried to reach out uh, to create consumer offerings and that didn't work out so well. Uh, right now, there is growing recognition that everybody should contribute their own best skills, but the world of healthcare that is highly regulated and convoluted should be translated into the world of consumers. And we begin to see great companies in Silicon Valley and other areas like Samsung and Apple reach out and create devices like the Apple Watch that everybody is using and try to use them in order to create meaningful clinical outcome improvement in a way that is completely connected to the healthcare uh, ecosystem. So you've brought, brought, it, brought us right up to the next part of the conversation, which is Clearly, both companies have built tremendous value, and, and you could speak to how many lives each of your companies is touching. Um, 2.1 billion. Fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure that we are much smaller than that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, the point is that each of you is bringing great value already, but what's the hybrid vigor you see by bringing your companies together? Yeah. Well, um, you know, we decided last year to become a pure health tech company. So um, we're no longer the, the Philips that people may recognize from consumer electronics, from light. We're, we're purely health. And we basically see health as a consumer uh, directed uh, industry. So we're bringing to bear consumer understanding of consumer technology in the context of health, in the context of taking care of yourself and prevention. And of course, we're linking that to our professional health franchise, where we have a great franchise around monitoring, um, a great franchise around diagnostics with genomics, digital pathology added uh, to imaging. 
but, but ultimately we want to look at how to create true network care with systems that make sure that you do the right diagnosis, the right treatment, the right follow-up, and actually also help prevent people from getting sick in the first place. And, you know, when we start talking with Ido and his team, we, we aligned on a, on, on a real joint vision of where, where healthcare is going and how we both can contribute to it. And we found out that our capabilities are largely complementary. And we found out that we have a good way to collaborate and work together and create, you know, very valuable propositions. And I think that's the, that's the secret to these kind of, of collaborations. You have a joint vision, you have an understanding of your respective roles, you respect each other. And then, you know, working with some of the key providers, key payers, you can take off. Mm -hmm. what, what sort of extra capacities do you see that you'll have by teaming up with Philips? Well, you can immediately see the companies are very similar. Uh, Philips was started 130 years ago by a Jewish guy. American was started 10 years ago by a Jewish guy. <laughs> we operate in one country. Philips operates in 60 countries. 120. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And they're not competitive. <laughs> and there are other very other important similarities. Uh, having said all that, it's pretty clear that Philips owns some pretty amazing assets. It's very rare that the company truly understand consumers and at the same time truly understand healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, so Philips comes to the table with a phenomenal success in creating products that everybody could use, that are affordable, that are easily understood and, 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 and really distributed. And then at the same time, is able to generate enormous amount of information that can be securely analyzed and made available to the ecosystem. And at the same time, is present in every hospital, in every practice, and really understand providers. So that's a terrific infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, to allow us to begin to realize the new model of care and that is truly complementary. Uh, another element that is uh, often uh, not focused on, which is American Well, almost per design, is, is based in the US. But the unmet need that we are trying to solve is truly global. Mm -hmm. And Philips is truly a global company. So one of the opportunities that we have together is do some good not only here, but really worldwide. Well, I, I think you've highlighted a couple things that I'm excited about on the healthcare delivery side of things as a provider. One is that I think by the collaboration, we're going to get closer to this combined patient-generated data. So it's the qualitative and the quantitative. Yeah. And you're each bringing yeah. different strengths to that. And also understanding and supporting people in what we call their life flow, but in their real lives. So maybe point of life diagnostics instead of point of care diagnostics. And this collaboration seems to me to move us just a quantum leap ahead towards those, those opportunities that we're seeking. The other is I think you brought up a really interesting point that Philips is embedded in the traditional healthcare model, which by the way, we're still gonna need. We, we're going to have to sort out where we need high tech and high touch, but we absolutely are going to need to be integrated with that, even if we believe that we have to be much more present in people's real lives. So I, I really appreciate the points that you brought out. Since I am very excited about this model that you're pulling together, I would love to know what your timeline is. When do you see um, an actual demonstration of this? And maybe give us an example of what would be your first jumping off point yeah. of demonstrating so this. Thanks. Um, actually, this quarter, we're going to formally launch our first uh, proposition, which is, I believe, a very interesting proposition because it, uh, we have a, Philips has a huge mother and child care franchise. So baby bottles, baby monitors, etc. Uh, but we're also leader in neonatal uh, support monitoring. Mm -hmm. um, we're big in uh, children's hospitals. So what we thought is, can we bring together the world of you know, pregnancy and early childhood and link that to care? So we developed a, a really very comprehensive uh, system for uh, pregnant or young moms. And that allows young moms the, to collect information on their baby like a connected uh, feeder. Uh, they can talk through Alexa to keep a, kind of a lock of what they're doing with the baby. But if the baby wakes up in the middle of the night screaming and you've done everything right and keep streaming, you take the temperature, also through our connected uh, temperature, 
um, but you're at a loss. So at that moment, you press a button and it triggers the Emwell app that immediately finds the right doctor to talk to you at this moment, which is in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. reads out the information and jointly with the mother decide what's the best course of action. So it's really that care, professional care at that moment. And actually at the same time, they check whether it's being reimbursed or not. So everything is handled seamlessly in the background. So it's an amazing experience for uh, the young parents but it's also a seamless integration with the care system. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's a good example. Mm -hmm. And it's just the first example because, of course, we have a whole bunch of appealing propositions lined up behind this. Mm -hmm. But it's all around the consumer. But that seamless connection to professional care. Mm -hmm. You know, my daughter gave birth to our fifth grandson. So I'm in the business of pregnancy and child <laughs> <laughs> right now. And she's really looking forward to those products. Uh, we, what we're trying to do essentially is close loops. We're going to be in the closing loop business for a long time from now. And what we can do is pretty, pretty incredible because if you think about the fact that we are symptom driven today, usually people arrive when something bad happens. But if we're able to monitor a baby and detect changes much earlier than that, there is a real opportunity for much more effective intervention. So imagine a mother in Dallas that goes to Walgreens and buys a Philips product and puts it on her baby and it's safe, secure, and very easy to use. And then the data flows into the cloud and something happens, an alert is being triggered. Uh, in, usually in those cases, the alert would go back to the mother and say, you need to do something, which is really not the optimal way. Imagine that the alert now goes to her pediatrician in Dallas Children. And this alert is now, a, the pediatrician allows the pediatrician to reach out back to the mother, potentially change the medication of the child. Everything is paid for by her payer, by Anthem, for example. And, in, in, and possibly Uber is delivering the medication directly to her home. So right now, the surprised mother is opening the door with the medication for a problem she didn't even know happened to her child. This is an example, illustrative example, of some of the things that we're trying to do. I think it was a really nice illustration, too, of the capabilities when you have more immediate information or getting closer to what we've coined of a phrase called uh, informed living or informed health. Yeah. So the idea that you get the right information at the right time to make the right choice. And that closed loop capability can only happen when we merge different capacities like yours. Um, I also was really um, quite impressed by the fact that if you use American Well, you get to look like that as a grandfather. I mean, that was quite stunning. <laughs> if I could speak to your marketing people, I think that would be <laughs> one of the top. <laughs> well, the makeup people outside are unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'd like to also talk about some of the challenges around this. I mean, there's tremendous excitement, and we, I think we can all Hopefully we'll see it, we'll experience it right now, we can sense the capacity of it. What are some of the challenges of partnering, especially between different size organizations yeah. and with maybe some different cultures coming in? Well, I, I think there's multiple partnerships. So, you know, for us it's a relatively easy partnership because there's compatibility of culture and, and vision. Um, we see some of the, the more forward-looking um, IDNs that, that are really into this kind of solutions and they, want, they have their own innovation organization. So um, most of the people you and I know. So, and, and they're going to do this. They're, they're going to deliver this kind of care. You know, we all know that Kaiser has already half of their visits uh, online. So, so we, this is going to happen. It's going to start by the leading providers uh, we're going to give them the tools, we're going to give them the capabilities, and we will partner with them the similar ways we partner together. We align on a vision, we're very clear on roles and responsibilities, uh, we're very clear on how we manage the data together and uh, guarantee not only secure, but also make sure that the right information gets at the right person at the right time. Um, and it's going to happen this year. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. have quite a, a number of interesting engagements in the pipeline, and. You know, I, I said in my latest blog, this is going to be the year of virtual care. Well, it also sounds like 
partnering with one entity isn't the way you build a network, that you're mm -hmm. actually seeking and open to more partnerships. Yep. So make a note in your diaries about that. Um, did you want to respond to that as well, Ido? Yeah, I mean, this was an easy one. I mean, it took me 20 seconds to marry my wife and a little longer to <laughs> do this partnership. Uh, but, that yeah, but your wife is more attractive. So. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see yours, but anyhow. <laughs> I said bring up whatever you want to. Oh, okay, uh, guys, we stop here. <laughs> <laughs> we have to roll it back in. Well, the reason it works so well is that we are totally aligned on vision and values. And yeah. vision is easy because many people align on vision. Uh, values is a little harder. Uh, to, to put it simply, we really have the benefit of the consumer in mind first. And then we really believe that we should serve the doctor not replace the doctor. And that's very important. Um, we also are strong believers in opening up the kimono and be as collaborative as we can. And, and because of that, uh, we already found out that even since the announcement this week, lots of pretty amazing organizations stood up yeah. and say, hey, we'd like to join this journey and we believe in what you're doing. And that's exactly why we wanted to do this. It sounds to me like we're hearing themes that we're all striving for, collaboration, transparency, the hybrid vigor of this. And I think what I hear when I hear a model like this from a, a provider and also as a patient is I think we're getting to the point, like you said, this year where we're going to realize this capability of our, ourselves moving across a continuum of wellness to illness. Currently, our bodies move, wellness to illness and back again, but our data doesn't move, our devices don't move. So I think it is extremely exciting, not just that we think it's the right thing to do, but you're going to measure it and you're going to learn and you're gonna, we're going to get so much more advanced rapidly by this type of a model. Thank you very much for your, your conversation. Real pleasure. Thanks. Uh, Thank you very much. much.